one thing that teachers realize that sometimes politicians don't realize is that before you can get to the ABCs and the one, two, threes, you really, there, there's these other hierarchies of need that, that come before that. Like, do, does the kid in your class know what he's gonna, you know, know that he has a meal coming that night for dinner? Technology is um, a blessing and a curse. Yeah. I think the blessing is that, hey, Google is a wonderful thing. You can look up anything. But the curse is that there's also so many distractions that you can get from technology. Well, to me, the biggest needs that, that the biggest challenge is to meet the social emotional needs of the kids at the same time that you're able to get them excited about learning and keep make them feel safe and secure and that they're in an environment where they can experiment. Compassion and empathy, all those things are 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 laughed out of the classroom these days by yeah. the people making educational policy and right. and the irony of that is that every day those are the things that we need to draw on more and more in order to mm -hmm. keep our kids within you know the widening arms of you know the classroom without losing them to dropping out or or, or disappearing in some other way. I think one of the things that I've found in science is that it's true what Dan is saying. I mean, they are a digital generation and everything is at their fingertips. The problem with that in science is it takes a while sometimes for the experiment to <laughs> to be processed. And I have students in class that say, well, it's not done yet. Well, it might be two days before it's done, <laughs> you know? A kid's going to perform a lot better if his belly's full than if he's hungry. Um, and that's just on the social side, I'd like to see that. I think they lose some of that social face-to-face -face interaction as well. They're not get. They're still communicating with people, but there's a big difference between sitting across a table from somebody and talking to them and texting them. Mm -hmm. A part of our job as teachers is to get students to pass the tests and to get students to, you know, be successful in their future courses. But a big part of it is to make them feel like part of something. Um, and I think that teachers here do a really good job of, of kind of making students feel like yes. they matter. I think there's a lot, you know, that, that, that can't be measured, you know, by a, a standardized test. And those are oftentimes the skills that, uh, you know, students really need, um, you know, to succeed in, you know, uh, this, you know, this day and age. Mm -hmm. One of so my frustrations with the testing is that we do all these tests, but we really never have time to s we're not given the time to sit and look at the results and let them affect our teaching and our curriculum. Their teachers are going to have to, you know, you know continually you know, document that, you know, student learning is taking place and, um, you know, doing, uh, you know, extra, you know, you know, paperwork and trying to validate, uh, you know, what we do. Um, and I think one of the biggest dangers in that is that um, some, uh, you know, I guess great time could be taken away from um, innovation and, and creativity, you know, designing and implementing those lessons that, you know, do encourage, uh, you know, critical thinking and uh, the development of, you know, 21st century skills. A lot of times what we're teaching them isn't serving them in the best way possible because, you know, if we have a student who's maybe not academically as strong as another student, a lot of times that's not because of what's happening in school, but what's happening in the rest of his life or her life. And if we could serve that student better, we could probably raise that student up to a level where they'd be equal to anyone else, but we don't have the time or the resources to do that. A standardized test isn't going to do it. And this year we did um, some professional development about around engaging kids in reading and, and getting them more excited about reading. And um, I had then tried to sort of apply some of that to this one student who just took off with her reading. Um, Students instead. are at their best too when, right. they, when they get into it. And, and a, lot of, a lot of the best lessons that we te teach are probably lessons that we're teaching because the students have taken us, taken us on a tangent. The moments that were the most uh, meaningful in terms of my, uh, my teaching were the moments when we ended up going off my script. 
So you prepare a lesson plan and and you go in and the class goes in a direction that's completely different <coughs> than what you planned and you constantly have to improvise to keep it going but but you're following instead of following your script you're following your students mm -hmm. um, engagement and their interest and their curiosity and really the goal of education for me is to take kids from here and find whatever path it is that they're where their interests lie and, and push them along down the road and the other stuff comes. Mm -hmm.